Welcome. Could you please tell me who you are and why you're here? My name is Erik van der Zijde. I work for Sinus Medical Apps. And I'm here because I gave a presentation on uh, Let's Get Personal uh, Insights into Patient History via Personalized Medical Apps. And what was the point you wanted to get across? What, what did you want to tell people? What I want to tell people is that um, for patients it's really important to understand one's disease, one's condition, for example chronic patients. They, uh, they, they use Google for that, for instance. Yeah, but not their own health. So I want to give them insight into their own oh, health. Yeah. And every person is different, is unique, and yet we try to put every single patient in the same app. And what we did is we are creating a platform that makes personalized medical apps based on the symptoms of a specific patient. And having this insight would help them changing their behavior. So, so how does this work? For instance, I'm ill, I'm, what sort of disease do I have? Now let's, let's assume, <laughs> because my company made the IP voiding diary, it's one of the first uh, uh, medical apps uh, CE certified in the Netherlands. Um, and that is for people with bladder problems. So, assume you have bladder problems, you want to know a few things. First, how much you drink, how much you pee, and whether you suffer from uh, urine loss, right? So you can just download the app and use that, but maybe you're a patient, you say, well, I don't suffer from urine loss, but I have problems with my heart as well. So I would also like to know my uh, blood pressure, my pulse, and my activity. Now with our platform you can create the first, let's say, the drinking and how, how much you pee in combination with your heart problems and create one app which is specifically for you. Mm -hmm. And then certain things you have to fill in by hand. For example, if you drink a coffee, you have to get your phone. You have to... But there are also some things that you can measure automatically by sensor technology. So if you have a wrist which measures your, uh, your heart rate or your activity, it brings it automatically in the app. So you've built this? Um, our building is. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> our building is. Yeah, our building is. Yeah. Oh, so it's still in, in progress? Yeah, it's still in progress, yeah. In progress. So um, uh, how long does this, this whole process take? From beginning well, to end? Well, from the beginning, from the conception of the idea, which was uh, last year, I guess, until now, where we have a working prototype, where we talk to uh, to investors, where we talk to to patients and and healthcare professionals, you know, that that, that takes some time, and then we still now Years. have to. Yeah, well, I would say uh, we are now approximately uh, nine months in the process from the first conception till now, and now we have to start building. So the first prototypes will be around quarter one. So in, in, at the same time you're looking for investors probably, people who want to pay for this, uh, this uh, thing. Is that a difficult process or is, that, is it easy? No, I would not say it's easy. It's an interesting process, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, if you look at investors, and, and we, we talked to a few of them, not like, like hundreds or so, but um, investing in healthcare and technology is for a lot of people a bit scary. Because healthcare does not move that fast, and technology does. So the combination of both you know, will slow down eventually when your return on investment is there. That will take longer the time than you are doing something in consumer marketing, for example, or in the consumer market. So therefore, you need to be of a certain kind that really would like to invest in healthcare. Yeah. And do you find these people here in Holland? Because I, I, I read a lot about investments in, in America and they seem to be going a lot in this direction. Yeah. They seem to think that, uh, well, uh, um, serious games are the holy grail somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know about serious game because my, no, my platform is not a serious game. But no. if you look at investment, uh, let's say Holland compared to the US, Although I do not have experience with the US, but what I read is that in the US, yes, they are easier with providing money uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and go for it. Um, but that's just the country we're living in. And yes, we are a small country. So if you have a platform like ours, you need to have the ambition to go abroad and to go also to other countries. Otherwise, you know, 16, 16 million people and that's it. And then that's not too much. No, no. No, and while the platform you're building could could 
or be uh, something that could yeah eventually if you look to uh, worldwide yeah, yeah to to chronic chronic patients we have in Holland 4.5 million chronic patients and of course if you put them all uh, you know uh, in your house that would be a very crowded place but uh, it's still a small number of course because you are targeting only a fraction uh, of that not likely 4.5 million no. So yeah, you need to also go abroad, and if you look to the U.S. and if you look to uh, uh, to the Middle East, for example, and to Asia, and well, you know, there is so much more to do. Yeah. But then there is the trick that there are different dynamics as far as healthcare is concerned. We we understand the Dutch healthcare system, mm -hmm. or well, we do our utmost to understand because it's a very complex thing. But if you go to the U.S. or even if you go to Germany or to Belgium, it's already different. Right? And you need to find something that fits into the existing system, otherwise you have, you have problems accepting it. Yeah, so that's another problem you have to tackle. Well, yeah, it's, it's a challenge. A chal another challenge you, have to, you face. <laughs> are, there, are there any more challenges you face? Uh, any more challenges is, of course, um, uh, yeah, well, user adoption. How many people are going to use these kind of technologies? Uh, of course, you can increase that by making something that works really well, uh, do some uh, user testing and what have you, uh, but eventually going from the pilot phase to the real, uh, the, 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 real world. The, the majority, yeah. from the early adopters to the, adopters to the majority, there is a gap and we need to bridge that gap. And are you thinking about this already, how, how you're going to... Well, in, in many innovations, um, I, I believe you, you really start small and um, uh, you book some successes, you learn from your mistakes, you make your product better um, and of course you hope that it will just go as, a, as, as oil, you know, that it just mm -hmm. extends. Uh, but it's a, it's a lot of work and uh, it's really on the road, talking to people, trying to uh, motivate them to start uh, using your platform and finding the right partners to help you. Because what I see, what I see in, in healthcare or Health 2.0 or eHealth or whatever you want to call it, um, all these companies that have great ideas and platforms, what have you, we are all uh, doing our own battle. Whereas we need to organize ourselves so to win the war, so to say, right? And um, it's, it's, it's siloed, right? So uh, you have a nice initiative there and a nice initiative there, but it doesn't talk to each other. I mean, yeah, I could blame myself too. When we created IP Voiding Diary, all the data in that app is in a, in its own container, and there is no API that you can take it out and you know take it with you, and and, and that's not good. No. That's not good because you should be able to to take your data outside because the the data is for, is of the patient it belongs to the patient and it doesn't belong to a healthcare institution no. and it doesn't it doesn't belong to an IT company. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. But but who should organize this? Because all these companies are well working be besides each other, not really yeah. communicating. Who? Who should be the one to stand up yeah, and say, "Well, let's let's do this. Let's make it better." <laughs> I would I would love to say that uh, that I'm the one to organize, but that's not the case. I mean, uh, um, so what kind of dynamics do you have? You have uh, either one big party standing up and say, "Hey, this is what I'm going to do," and hopefully somebody will follow, or you have a very big IT. Uh, organization like Microsoft for example who says hey I have Microsoft health vault and you can all connect to my eh? but then again what happens to the data or the government could, could stand in and say okay we are going to organize something well you know good luck with that so I believe that um, initiatives like this where you this, meet this people, conference you this mean conference yeah. and um, uh, things like this where you meet people um, but also initiatives like Health Valley and what have you. you know, these are where you meet people and start to work together and to collaborate. That's important. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, uh, an answer like this, I don't have, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>